Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Scott Coward. I'm so excited about this. Well, I'm really blessed today to actually have Scott Coward. He is the superintendent of Carroll County Schools, and I'm actually going to be joining you uh, and your leadership team uh, coming up in July. And I'm so excited to to speak to you today, to have you on the podcast and uh I, I, we were just talking a little bit of basketball before the podcast, and I could easily turn this into a basketball podcast because Scott knows a ton of this stuff. And, but I know that's not what people are here for, even though I love talking basketball all the time. So Scott's been a superintendent. Uh, he's been in education 40 plus years. And when we were planning for this event, I said um, to Charity Aaron, who is absolutely wonderful and just amazing, I said, I would love to have your superintendent on the podcast. And she said to me, yeah, he'll do it in a second. So I'm so excited that you're here, um, Scott. And uh, if you could just tell a little bit about yourself, kind of, you know, what you do today, I, I'd love for people to learn a little bit more about you. Oh, absolutely. We uh, live in the wonderful community of uh, Carrollton, Georgia. Um, this is a school system that uh, has about 16,000 students. Uh, we're a rural community, about 50 miles outside of Atlanta. Uh, and uh, we're in an exciting time of growth here in our school system in our community. It's a good place to live. And, uh, you know, just uh, really focused on what we can do to possibly change the lives of our students, as well as all the other folks that we inter interface with. Well, and one of the things that I really noticed, um, you know, talking to the people from Carrollton, and it's like every, every single person I interacted with was so warm, so welcoming, and just made such an impact on me right away, like just the most inviting people. So obviously, I know that's really important to you. And uh, it, it's really made an impact on me. So I'm, I'm so excited to, to join you all. And I know you've been in education 40 plus years, um, you're a continuous learner. But when you look back on your career, you look back, back at your experience, you know, as a student, who's a teacher that you think of who really inspired you and why? When you ask me that question, there's a name that just is right there in front of me. And it's uh, Jim Bennett. Uh, he was my high school senior government teacher. And uh, I had was fortunate to have many, many fantastic teachers who uh, impacted my life. But Mr. Bennett was that teacher who the minute I walked in the door, he galvanized me, he engaged me, he challenged me. Uh, but he, most of all, he believed in me. Uh, he, you know, government sometimes is not necessarily the most interesting high school class to take. Uh, but he had me on the edge of my seat, uh, and he expected us to come in prepared every day uh, and to actually uh, really engage in what government is and understand it, you know, from, from a different perspective relative to, you know, as a student, okay, I, I, I heard about the government, what's the government do? But, you know, how does it happen? You know, and, and what does it mean? And most importantly, what were our responsibilities? Uh, so that really stuck with me is a, as a you know, 17, 18 year old to learn that I had responsibilities when it came to how our government functions and you know how the quality of life in our community is impacted by decisions that are made by government and how I can impact those decisions. Uh, so again, he was just one of those teachers that inspired me. Um, but most of all, uh, as I said earlier, he challenged me. Well, and and I love that. We're gonna give a, a little shout out, you know, to your teacher there. So I love that. The uh, one of the things that I, I think when we were talking just really about evolving, and you know, you use that word when we were, you know, prepping for the podcast. The, the a lot of uh, stuff in education has changed, and there's this kind of notion by you know many people, maybe outside of education, maybe even inside education, is that um, educators are getting actually soft on students i'm actually I, and my my experience is that um it's not that they're getting soft people are actually higher like getting higher expectations that it's more than just grades right and there's more to life than grades and there's so much in how we impact the world how and not just the world outside of school but the world in school as well the culture that we create amongst each other and so that idea that we need to really kind of push and support people as your as your teacher did for you is something that I think the best teachers have always done right there's there's this notion that we need to build relationships and I'm such a big believer in that but it goes beyond that the reason we build those relationships is so that we can challenge is so that we can push you know kids and all the people that we support 
uh, to be their best versions of themselves. So that, that that is absolutely cool and amazing to think after all these years in education, how um, he still influences you in your work today, which is which is really really cool. It shows the legacy of a teacher last, you know, a, an entire lifetime. So that is amazing. Um, you know, Julie, I, one please, of the things you said is that uh, if you think about you know how do we better challenge kids, how do we have higher expectations. If we'll quit focusing on teaching and focus on learning, it'll happen. I, lo I love that. This is what, one of the reasons I, I actually wanted you to come on the podcast um, is just to kind of hear about your vision and your, you know, the, the, w how you're leading the, the districts. And I, I love everything you say. So I'm, I am so excited to, to join you all. And so I know that uh, I get the honor and privilege to, uh, work with your leadership team, your administrators. I know that you've done a, a ton of different roles um, in your career, including now being the superintendent. But when you look back at your career, who's an administrator that really inspired you, whether as a kid, you know, whether, you know, as a, a, an adult, who inspired you and why? Well, it's interesting. Again, I've had a number who have uh, actually impacted me in a very positive way. But the name that jumps at me uh, is a, a gentleman by the name of Tom Upchurch. Um, Mr. Upchurch, uh, I was a, a young teacher. Um, I was working on my master's, and uh, um, one day he was in our building. He was not an administrator in our school system. In fact, he was in a competing school system, but he was uh, in a meeting in our building, and he was walking down the hall and purposely stopped by my room and, and spoke to me. Uh, he said he knew of me, and uh, he encouraged me as a young teacher, and he said, Scott, I really want you to think about um, potentially one day moving into leadership. I, I really think that that could be something that you would be good at. And from that moment forward, he became like a, a mentor to me uh, through the years. And it still is. He still lives in our community. Uh, and I will often call him. I will go visit him. And uh, or if we've got a big issue coming up in the community or school system, I'll, I'll get his advice even to this day. Uh, but he saw something in me. Uh, and encourage me, you know, there. And, and again, it just sticks with me as I think about what is it I do as a superintendent every day? How, how am I impacting every person that I come in contact with? Is it, is it in a positive way or is it not? And uh, I have that ability to really make um, a difference in people's lives. And he made a difference in my life. I love that. We'll give him a little shout out. Hopefully he's listening right now. So that, that's amazing. There, it, I was having a conversation just yesterday with a superintendent's name, Lamont Dean in Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill ISD, right? I know you're a big basketball fan. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. Chapel Hill. I, and he's like, oh, no, no, it's in Texas. Uh, I was you like, said oh. Durham, right? Durham. <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> and, uh, and it was the same thing. Like he had a very similar situation and we were started talking about a lot of really amazing administrators had no intention of going into administration, but just kind of serving people and, you know, seeing that, you know, the school as a community, as a village was something they just kind of innately did. And then somebody tapped them on the shoulder uh, and, and brought that out of them. And, and one of the things that you said really kind of reminded me of something that just happened this last weekend, you know, who we interact with, do we lift people up? Do we elevate them? Um, I was speaking at a conference in South Carolina and I actually, weirdly enough, I have a fractured bone in my foot and it is just horribly painful, all this stuff. And the next day I actually could barely walk. Like my foot was so sore and some, this is the weirdest thing. Someone reached out to me and they said, your keynote yesterday was life changing. It was amazing. And I, I was just like, so overwhelmed with the kindness and my, and this is the weirdest thing. My foot started feeling better. Like immediately as soon as I said that. So I'm like, I said to my wife, I'm like, did, did, did my foot just feel better? Like, is that, did that just happen? So I actually Googled it and there is actually a, there is actually research that says like, like emotional, you know, positivity actually can not, it's not, it didn't fix my foot, but the endorphins and, you know, the, the dopamine that you actually get from that kindness actually has shown to alleviate pain. And I thought that was the, I could not believe it. I was like, oh, there is some science behind this, right? So just kind of, you know, those interactions, they, they don't just affect people emotionally, they can affect them physically in many ways too, which I, which I, I never knew until, you know, I got that compliment because it was just, I was like, wow, I wish people do this every day so my foot would just, the pain would go away <laughs> all the time, right? <laughs> Right, sir. Yeah. So one of the things that I really appreciate about you and Charity um, told me about you is um, you've been you've been in Carrollton for a while, and 
she said, you are a continuous learner. And in the conversations we have, the reflections you have, it's just amazing that you, you've been in education, but you're continuously growing that you, um, you know, you know so much in, in your work that you do and you're constantly evolving in the work that you do. But if you can go back to your first year teacher self, what advice would you, would you give to first year teacher Scott? First year teacher Scott, they don't care what you know until they know how much you care. Uh, every new teacher probably hears some version of that. You know, somebody's going to talk about building relationships, connecting with the kids. But you know what, George, it, it, it is so real. I don't really think we equip our young teachers with a full understanding of why that's important. Um, you know, because when you go in a classroom and you got 25 students and I taught social studies and, and I'm sitting there trying to teach them a world history lesson out of uh, ancient Greece and, uh, you know, trying to get them to connect and see the relevance of, you know, what, what is it we can learn from that? You know, if, if I have made individual connections where then I can tailor my message to individual students and connect them in different ways, then there, there's a higher likelihood that, number one, they're going to be interested in what I'm saying. Number two, mm -hmm. they're willing to take that and, and actually learn from it. And, and number three, that when they when they help us create an environment in that classroom where everybody can learn. Uh, and if you built those relationships, then it's not just the ones that are going to be the learners no matter what. It, all of them will have an opportunity to be in a classroom whose environment is conducive to learning. So it goes back to relationships at the beginning, you know, do everything you can do in those first few days to connect to each kid, learn their story, share your story. Mm -hmm. uh, so that they'll know who you are and, and, and make those connections real. And then you've got a foundation then you can build uh, and move from. I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. One of the things you said, um, I think doesn't get enough attention in education because I think a lot of people talk about how important relationships are, how much we know our kids, you know, how, you know, how we connect with them every day. But relationships are a reciprocated thing. And if they don't know anything about you, they don't really see you. They don't see you really outside of being a teacher or a principal, but they see like the holistic parts of you too, right? You know, where we have those little personal stories, then there's, that's where a lot of that trust is built, right? Because if they see you as one dimensional, but you know, all these things about them, then, you know, it's a little bit harder to, to build those relationships. So it totally aligns with the work that I'm going to be doing with your staff. So I cannot wait to, to join you all. And um, it is seriously such a blessing um, to be able to talk with you today. And I cannot wait to, 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 meet, your, to meet your staff and to be with you all. Um, so everyone listening, make sure you give uh, Scott a follow on social media. You can see all the stuff, all the places he connects down below. But Scott, thank you so much uh, for taking time out of your busy day to join me. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to talking with you more today. All right. Thank you, George. And we're looking forward to having you in Carroll County. Can't, cannot wait.